How's it going guys? Well, today I thought I'd uh, make a quick video on our chicken feeder. And uh, it's a feeder that we've been using for about three years now and it's worked fantastically for us. I can fill it up about once a month or so um, and we have anywhere from 12 to 15 chickens. And so uh, here's a quick review of what it looks like. So uh, stay tuned and I'll show you how I built it. All right, so here it is. All that I did was take a uh, 50 gallon garbage can and I went to Home Depot. Watch out, Chiggy. And bought four what they call three inch street 90s, which are a drainage pipe fitting. Oh, doesn't say on there. It says three inch, but it doesn't say what they actually are. Anyway, um, so I took this uh, this 90, and as you can see right there in the top, I took my skill saw and I made just a little tiny divot right directly in the top of it. And the reason for that was so that after I stick it in, and I'm not going to be able to, oh, maybe I can do it one-handed, so that after it hits the lip of the garbage can, it'll kind of click in. And that part, I won't be able to do <laughs> one-handed. So it kind of clicks into the lip of the garbage can, that way these things aren't falling out. And uh, these things have been here, like I said, probably three, three and a half years now. And uh, it's worked fantastic. I'm actually having to do kind of my first modification to this thing today. And that is, I noticed over the years, as you fill this thing up and you're dumping your food in here, it's been pushing these things down. And to the point where the 90s almost touching the bottom of the feeder and or the bottom of the garbage can i didn't want that i need a little gap so that food can kind of get underneath it so that they can peck it out so i just cut a couple little blocks real quick just some little one by material and then that way it'll kind of tuck up under the lip of these fittings and some of them don't touch yet um, you know, when I was drilling out around the bottom, you know, my measurements might not have been perfect. So I think two of them are a little higher, two are a little lower. So the two low ones definitely need it. Like that one's in really good. And that one there will need it also. But these other two, um, you know, as you can see there, I can get my fingers under it. There's maybe a three quarter, maybe a one inch gap or so. And that allows the chickens to get their head in there and they can eat until their heart's content. So um, the reason I like this is because I can fit uh, three and a half, almost four 50 pound sack or these 50 pounders. Yeah. 50 pound sacks in there. And uh, it lasts a long time. Most of the time I do three um, and it's, it's probably about a month or so in between feedings. And then throw your lid over the top of it, and now you have a waterproof feeder. Water's not not getting in there. Um, keeps all the water out of the top. And if you really had this out, just exposed to all the elements, you could just take a little bit of silicone or something and uh, seal across the top of that. Maybe drill some hole, a couple little holes in the bottom of the feeder, just in case a little water did get in. It had somewhere to go and could drain. But this uh, this has been an excellent feeder for us. Um, takes a lot of the hassle out of feeding. We don't have to feed every day or every week or anything like that. I just bring in full 50 pounders, dump them straight in there. There's there's it's it's that easy. So um, I hope that helps somebody out. And actually, I'll now that I'm looking at it, I'll show you this guy too. This was another quick and easy one. So I got a clear bucket so that I can see my water level. I took a, a screw top lid 
So this guy probably won't be able to do it one handed, but I can unscrew the top so I can get in there. I can wash it out, whatever. And then I have a heater. So as you can see here, we get a little bit of snow, so it's, it's pretty cold. I got a heater that goes in the top and this hole's big enough to get my cord in through. So I can feed it through and that'll keep my bucket defrosted all winter long. It's been down to zero degrees here and this bucket's never froze. They, they have water all winter long. And then I went on eBay and I got some of those little chicken water nipple things. And all they do is they touch it and it, it drips out water for them. So that, those two right there. And that, once again, we fill that, I don't know. Maybe once every other week or something like that. Especially in winter time. They're not drinking as much. They can go out. They can eat snow. Peck at snow. Whatever. So uh, between those two things right there. that's That's been our golden ticket for feeding and watering our chickens. Just thought I'd uh, show you I guess how I do my feed. Um, so normally I only let this thing get about half full. And that keeps some weight in the bottom of it. So then you can take your 50 pound bags just throw them over the edge and then i'll take my pocket knife and i just cut say a six inch incision in both of these guys and i let it uh mix together as it's going down and then is this section that's hanging over gets less empty i'll just one hand on the end of each of them and i'll just kind of lift them up tip them in and just let it mix together as it's pouring in and once again, you know, if, if, if it's half full of feed, then the bucket doesn't tip over on you and uh, it makes it quick and easy. So that's, uh, that's how I've, my little trick for filling them. All right. up the bags while you're doing it you're just slowly tipping them in it does all the work for you 